Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching The Batman. So, The Batman stars uh, Robert Pattinson. And you know, I did really enjoy this movie. I remember when I saw it in theaters for the first time. And I just remember thinking to myself like, this was such a... It had such a great crime and like kind of like this very uh, noir kind of a feel to it. It just felt very true to Batman. It felt like a very good Batman story. Uh, and I, I particularly enjoyed the riddles. I liked the whole solving, the the crime aspect of it. I just found it really enjoyable. There were a couple of moments where I was kind of like, okay, like, you know, uh, the actor who plays Carmine Falcone, like, I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Like, that's not Batman, so it was kind of hard to, like, see him as the character. It, it, it just took me out of it for a second. I was like, oh, like, I can't, like, uh, you know how sometimes when you watch a movie, like, you're not even thinking that it's a movie or, like, their actors are acting or whatever. You're just kind of like, oh, this is the story and this is what's happening. Like, you, you feel that sometimes when you watch, like, TV shows or movies and it's just like, you're in it, you know what I mean? You're not thinking about, like, wow, they're acting it. You're, like, you're just witnessing it, you know what I mean? That's... And and this and the and the actor and the uh, who plays Carmine Falcone just kind of took me out of it, um, just a little bit. You know what I mean? It just makes you snap out of it. Uh, I didn't have that same reaction when I saw Robert Pattinson in it, or when I saw like uh, Colin Farrell in it, or any of the other actors. It was just just him because it just for some reason I don't know what it was. But anyways. This movie actually opens up on Halloween, so this is like a perfect, like spooky start to the to the festivities. But anyways, uh, I kind of want to just focus on a few moments of the film that I really enjoyed, or I guess aspects or moments that really stood out to me. So the first one would have to be, I mean, the Riddler, Paul Dano, did fantastic in this movie. So. I think as a character, the Riddler was such a great opposition to Batman. Well, as, as in particularly the this one, one because he was still relatively, relatively new. He wasn't really. He wasn't really fighting for change in the in the in the same old way, like he was beating up criminals, but he was just beating them up. Like I don't know if he had like a concrete goal per se much like uh different to um christopher nolan's where he was like trying to combat the the criminals in organized crime he was trying to stop um i don't know if it was salvatore no no no. it was uh carmine falcone in the first one in batman begins so it, it was him trying to stop the big mob bosses or whatever or like those in at the head of the uh, the drug uh, operation in Gotham. So he had like a concrete goal. Whereas in this one, it didn't feel like he was targeting or going after anybody in particular. It felt like he was just attacking Gotham's criminals willy nilly, so to speak. In the same way that like to just to beat them up because they're just bad people or whatever. Again, this is like his second year into being Batman. So it's not like he has like, uh, it feels, you know, he's still very fresh. He's still very new to the, to the whole thing. It's just that like, you know, he, in order to, to, to really help the city, it's, it's better to have like a concrete goal. Whereas for him, it's just like, I'm just going to beat up all the bad guys in the city and I'm going to use fear to like hang over their heads. So that way, you know, the, they don't do what they do anymore. They're afraid that I'm in the shadows, going to find them. Which we see, and he has some some pretty great moments, but... Anyways, back to the Riddler. So, the reason why the challenge is so good in this movie is because he's essentially exposing Gotham and all of its failures. So, it, it, he works as a way to push Batman into seeing what the real problem with the city is, or, or how the city is actually not just it's not just random criminals street thugs or you know gangs or whatever beating up people or or whatever 
it's an entire system he has to go after and he has to figure out how to stop uh, Gotham's criminals from being in control. And by being in control, they have leverage over city officials. Uh, they, they have control over money. They have control over people. Like They just use the entire city to their advantage so that way they can become untouchable, essentially. And the Riddler exposing them as frauds exposing the um what was who is it the the district attorney he he was just exposing gotham's failures or the people that were supposed to be held up to a higher standard people who were supposed to do good for the city and they actually you know for money for any number of other things they would turn their back or they would essentially uh i guess rob the city of I don't say rob. Maybe maybe just like take from the city and not essentially do what they were asked to do. They're, they're taking advantage of or they're not uh, holding themselves to the standard that they were supposed to be at or whatever. And that's what it's challenging for the Batman is that he has no idea. He's learning all of this. He's, he's figuring it out. He's like, okay, so... This person is accepting bribes to turn away from certain cases to prosecute. So I need to know who he's trying to protect or who who's involved in all of this. And their fear of this organized crime or this person is what holds him back from getting the clear, perfect information. It's because the, it's not just their life that could be lost. It's multiple people you know so once you do a little bit once you do dirt once it's never just once it hangs over your head and they can go after everybody you know friends family uh acquaintances you know good people that are not have not been sunk down to their level to so to speak but for all of the what is it for all that Riddler does or like exposes he alone can't do everything like he can do some things like obviously he murders the um I don't know if it was the mayor right it was definitely the mayor to it, he kills the mayor in his own home on Halloween nonetheless but he kills him and then it kind of sets up the rest of the It kind of sets up the rest of the film as like, okay, this is what he's going for and this is what he's willing to do to people who are supposed to be good, who are supposed to like care about the city and care about the people of Gotham and they actually are doing the exact opposite. So for everything that he has, he has all of the pieces, he knows all of the people who are corrupted, all of the people who have done wrong, all of the people that who uh, who are essentially failures of Gotham and he kills people here and there. He does little like schemes and uh, scams to uh, like uh, he does riddles and whatnot to expose them, but he needs the Batman in order to kind of fiercely and powerfully help him out in a way. And that's why he kind of feels like they were, in it together that he feels like they they were a team the both of them he was able to kind of direct batman into doing what he needed him to do and he unknowingly fulfilled those exact same things but because of his own goals so for a moment they were kind of aligned but you know obviously the riddler had a bunch of different ideas of of what to what to do once People were out there in the real world. So, and I also just found his riddles completely, uh, uh, I found it a lot more interesting than, say, just like fighting a bunch of bad guys or whatnot. Like, it's more of a mental game. And I really enjoyed that from, from this movie. And in the end of the movie, it's not even him. He's locked up in jail, he's like assembled this whole nerd crew. To kind of kill the next mayor to be, uh, and you know, it, it just it takes a team to really 
to to fix everything you know what i mean so it's not just like one man versus the whole city right he doesn't do it by himself he needs help from batman he needs help from a bunch of people who are like-minded as he is who thinks of the city in the same way but yeah i just it's it's not the same whereas batman i mean batman has help you know he has jim gordon and sometimes the police uh officers and whatnot but and alfred not not uh as well not to mention selena kyle as catwoman so you know he does have some allies but it's not in the i mean i guess i guess nobody really does it alone but Batman is trying, I guess, you know, and throughout this movie. But anyways, Robert Pattinson as Batman was great. I felt like it was exactly, I mean, he just felt so secluded, so hidden and very mysterious Bruce Wayne in a way that the, I guess the other one was trying to portray as eccentric and fun and like, He's putting on an act, so to speak. Whereas this one is a lot more like just mysterious. Just doesn't uh, engage with anyone. He's just very alone. So there were great moments in this. And I feel like his Batman was a lot... This movie was a lot more detective mode. It wasn't so much like... uh, It wasn't so much a mix of things, right? Like we saw him fight. But it was in no way, shape, or form like in a... Uh, in like a real martial arts, like kicking and fighting and spins. Like it wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anything crazy. It was, it was more of like a hand, uh, fist to face kind of a, a fight. But that, that, that wasn't really all that important. I mean, it's cool, but it wasn't all that like, it wasn't the actions. Uh, the, that wasn't like the exciting part. What was the exciting part was him piecing together the clues and the riddles that the Riddler left behind. So we see it in the beginning with the crime scene of the uh, of the mayor dead. And we see him walking throughout the crime scene and he's looking at everything and he's not saying a word. And it's just like, that's just such a an amazing scene is that like, he's already, ha- he's already with Jim Gordon. They're already like kind of acquaintances here. And he's kind of... He's looking at everything and staying quiet, but he's also recording it with his uh, contact lens, which is so cool. I, I thought that was like, uh, obviously you you think about stuff like that or like you've seen those in other movies, but in this one, I feel like it was, uh, it, it's like a perfect tool for Batman to like revisit crime scenes or any details he may have missed or whatnot. So it was really cool. And then obviously seeing his cooperation with Jim Gordon, they have like a relationship, they're acquaintances, they're, they're work buddies, so to speak. And we also see kind of his intimidation, interrogation, and fear kind of a, a like aspect of him. Like, I mean, not aspect. I mean, it's a part of who Batman is, is intimidation and uh, fear. But there's like that moment where he catches the penguin uh where he flips over in the car and he's walking towards him and that's like that's like a form of intimidation but it's not in the same kind of way as um what is it in the same kind of way as i guess Christian Bale's where it's like he was literally hanging them from his grapple gun or whatever um and then you know it's he, he's solving it as he goes so it's not just like uh, we we get to go on it. We learn as he does, and that's that's what makes it great. That's what makes him so perfect in uh, uh, as this Batman. You know what I mean? So I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really cool. Now for the city of Gotham. Now this city of Gotham is actually it looks really good. It's it's completely different, but in a in a very classic kind of way. It's not much uh it's not like um tim burton's batman it, where that one feels like it has a it has a certain tim burton aesthetic to it that makes it fit his style this one was more of like a modern was really modern but it was so different it it looked like new york city it looked like chicago it, it looked like so many uh cities put together but it also felt very different and distinct it felt very unique and I, I thought that was cool. 
and we learn or we we notice that Gotham is under is in a re-election year. So because of that, we have to take into account like okay, so if they're in a re-election year, then things are going to get, you know, tensions are high. And that's what this all is about is uh how it takes notice and how it how people will pay attention is during that time when everything is up in the air for somebody to take over uh, control of Gotham, that's why it's now is the perfect time to expose the mayor's uh, failures. To expose the DA's failures, to expose Thomas Wayne's failures, to expose, you know, the, the whole system, essentially, and figure out, like, okay, how do we take control of the city? How do we make it what we want it to be? Or how do we exact vengeance against these corrupt officials, these corrupt people who put, who, who create people like the Riddler? So Gotham isn't exactly in a great place. It's actually very down and destroyed. But what is what does good look like for Gotham? Like, we see all of this um, talk about, like, you know, the city needs to change. The city can change, and we want it to be. But, like, it's it's difficult to think about, like, what does Gotham City look like happy, or at least this version of uh, Gotham City? Because we are just getting introduced to it. So it's it's difficult to kind of, like, piece together, like, okay, so... What would it take for Gotham to truly be, ha- uh, to be truly good? How do how do we make it like a good city? And in order to do that, we have to take a look at what the Riddler gets rid of. Essentially, he gets rid of the mayor. He kills the DA. Uh, it explodes him in front of everybody. He tries to kill Bruce Wayne. He fails, and then he destroys. Um, he floods the city. You know. Uh, the particularly the outer walls of Gotham, so that way the 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 waves come in. But those were created by the renewal fund, if if I remember, yeah, if I'm thinking correctly, that's what it's called. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But we see that Gotham is at the end of the movie is at the bottom, and it's it's going to take a lot of rebuilding, but. How are uh, this this Gotham City and this Batman are entangled, but it's not in the same way. We don't kind of see it in the same way as maybe in the last uh, couple of movies, which is like, I guess because the last one, we kind of understood Bruce's origin. You know, we, well, the origin is still the same, but we kind of experienced it in that first movie whereas in this movie it was kind of it was kind of passed over which is a good thing you know we already know that his parents death have traumatized him we just don't know how it's affecting him per se so in this movie his his vengeance is for his parents his father his mother uh that's why he beats up the criminals and that's why he kind of has like no direction for his actions it's more so like, I'm just going to beat up the criminals who are bad and that's it, you know. Whereas, I guess in the last movies, um, he had a concrete goal. He had a he had something he was working towards, something to stop. And in this one, we see the same with the Riddler. He's trying to stop him and in learning of his crimes and what he's doing to Gotham, he's able to fully understand the, the depth of of which Gotham is, um, the depth of which Gotham is kind of sinking and it, it does end up underwater, but it'll, it'll rise above it as well. So that's where we get to the organized crime. And this is where he kind of, it's not just the Riddler he needs to stop. He's not just a, a serial killer. I mean, he is a serial killer, but he's not just, he's not alone in, He's not just one madman going around killing whoever he wants, right? He is created by a system that has failed him, you know? 
he's he's an orphan who has failed because essentially renewal fund doesn't help him you know in the same way which is why he has bad feelings or he hates uh bruce wayne so renewal as i understand it the renewal fund was created by thomas wayne during his run for mayor of gotham and it was a way to avoid like the extra steps in like getting approval for certain things so like uh the wall I talked about earlier that protects Gotham from like the water or whatever, like uh, from flooding, that's created by the renewal fund. You don't need permission from the city to build those things, right? Like these are the things that the city needs in order to to become a better city. So otherwise, every time the water uh, water level rises, they would get flooded, right? So they built those walls with the renewal fund, so that way. Um, water wouldn't just pour into the city. Does that make sense? I, I don't know if I'm making sense. So, uh, if essentially big city decisions, like if, uh, that would normally take like permits and time and like, they would have to write drafts and they would have to like figure out a plan and they would have to like put the city to work on certain things for the for the betterment of the city, like if um, if a hospital needs to become, no, not a hospital. What am I talking about? Like, uh, like if a road, I don't know, needs to be fixed, right? No, you know, I think, I think the I think the wall was the best example. So the wall was made so that the city could be better. Oh, I, I guess the orphanage. Duh, the orphanage. So the orphanage that he lives at, right, would need funding to to take care of the under, uh, not under, the um, the homeless kids, right? So kids who are orphaned and they go to the orphanage, they wouldn't have to go to the city and ask for money. They would just get it from the renewal fund, and that way they could provide the kids with food clothes you know they could pay for electricity it would just it would just really take care of them you know they wouldn't need to go to the city or ask for donations so to speak they could just take from the renewal fund because it's for the city it's to take care of uh gotham's children essentially but because the criminals of the city would take advantage of renewal they could just take the money and own Gotham so to speak they would take the money from renewal and they would try to make the city I, I, I mean they wouldn't try to make the city they made the city their own place you know under the guise of renewal so to speak so I don't know if what I said just made any sense but it's supposed to help the city with public uh in the same way that public transportation is supposed to help the city, like it's supposed to help them out it in the same way for the city as well. So if a public bus gets destroyed or like blows up out of nowhere, right, then renewal fund would pay for a new one. And then the criminals of the city would use that renewal fund to pay for other things that may not be needed. And then it works to their advantage. And then they would constantly use it as a source of of income to kind of take advantage of the city, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. I, I don't know if I'm saying it properly, but whatever. That's why the Riddler is upset at uh, Bruce Wayne and Thomas Wayne, and it's why he tries to expose them. And we also see that it because of that, it has created people like Carmine Falcone. Uh, uh, not created, but it has prolonged their uh so to speak um their reign over gotham you know and it, it sets people up like the penguin it sets up um people like is it selena selena kyle like she's the daughter of carmine falcone and she becomes a victim well not a victim but she uh, kind of but she kind of becomes somebody who well, it's different because she's the daughter. But what I'm trying to say is that, like, she sees the city 
as irredeemable because of what she sees her father doing, you know, because Carmine Falcone is her father. And because of that, she's able to look at the city as it can't be fixed, whereas Batman is trying to look at the city as like, I'm not leaving it till it is fixed, and it can be. There can be a way to help the city, to heal the city, to make it better, to make it good. And that kind of perspective of one person trying to seeing organized crime as an endless pit, like an endless hole that that can't be repatched up, whereas Batman kind of looks at it as like, all you have to do is start, you know, putting the dirt back in, you know, and like making it nice and um, fixing it up. It's it's possible. So yeah, after that, it's just trying to, after the, the Riddler destroys the city uh, and floods it, you have to look at it and you have to think like, this, the Gotham is literally sinking and what Gotham needs isn't somebody who can beat up the criminals or beat up the bad guys, right? Like that Batman has been doing. In that instance, they need somebody to rely on. They need somebody to, to hope for. They, they, they need hope. And he needs to hope that Gotham can change, that Gotham is capable of rebuilding and becoming new. And he's not just this... Uh, he's not just this badass who beats up people all the time. He has to be uh, inspiration for others. And and being that, it's, you know, because he has inspired others, but not in a good way. You know, he has inspired the Riddlers to take the city back, but they're doing it in the wrong way or they're they're misinterpreting his so-called message. So he doesn't have to be vengeance anymore. He has to be more than that. And that's the weird thing is that like, what do the people really need? The people don't need somebody to be afraid of. They don't need to like look over their shoulder and be afraid of the Batman. They need to look over their shoulder and feel safe that he's there. They need to look over their shoulder and be like, thank goodness the Batman's here. Now nobody's going to... Nobody's going to hurt us. Nobody's going to... We don't have to be scared ourselves, you know? We don't have to be afraid of criminals in Gotham because Batman will protect us. So, yeah, I like that. And this Bruce Wayne and this uh, and this Batman are so... I mean, they're just so isolated. They're so alone. They feel like there's nothing... You know, for them, it just kind of is like the one day after another just beating up these criminals. And I guess what kind of shakes them or what like breaks them out of everything is not just like, not just being this angry person anymore. It's about directing his anger or, you know, focusing his anger to become better. So that way he doesn't have to... People don't have to suffer the same way he did. In the same... Because uh, in this movie we see Alfred like blow up essentially. He survives, but he like blows up. And I, I thought he was going to die in that in, in the movie. But it, he, he lives, you know, he's, he's very essential. But he blows up and he kind of explains that like, I never felt that kind of... I, I thought that fear was out of me. But... You know, and almost losing Alfred, he's kind of like, man, like, I could have lost him. He could have died, you know, because of my family, because of myself, you know, because I wasn't there. And he needs to do the same for the city. So I'm excited for the Batman part two or Batman two or whatever they're going to call it. I think they have a lot of potential moving forward. I have no idea what they're going to, what the next one is going to be about or like what it might be. Um, the penguin is a is obviously right there, perfect, and they also tease the Joker, which I don't know how I feel about that. I just feel like it's always the Joker, the Joker, the Joker, you know. And and, and I'm all for it, you know what I mean. I just I just want it done well. And they're already doing like, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Like it's kind of hard to figure out. Like okay, well, you know, we can't just keep on rehashing the same old, same old. We have to do it like fresh and new or it has to be a good 
uh, pairing has to be a good dynamic between the two. So that's that's kind of like my only thing. But other than that, this movie was great. Go check it out. Go watch it. It's a great. It's a great. Uh, I don't know. Is it like a crime thriller? It's it's just a great. Um, a great movie overall. So go check it out. Go watch it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you.